Good morning. Good morning, everybody. My, um, my mic was trying to hide from me. <clears throat> it's nice to see you this morning. It's wonderful to welcome you to worship here in Second Congregational Church and worship at Second Congregational Church in Beverly. We welcome those of you who are here in person, as well as those who are joining us on Zoom and those who may be watching later on in the week. We are pleased to welcome everyone, as we say, no matter who you are, where or how you are when you are joining us, or what you're seeking in your life this Lenten season. We're glad you are here and we, um, acknowledge, affirm that uh, regardless of how you may identify yourself or how you've been labeled by others, God welcomes you here and we join God in that welcome, welcoming you as a beloved child of God, just as you are. We have a number of announcements this morning. Um, first, an item that's a repeat from Thursday's e-news. If you read the Thursday, the weekly e-news, you saw that a number of things have moved in the schedule during March. So everybody get fleet of foot and ready to move. Um, the cha changes in the schedule for March, our Spirited Woman is moving from the 19th to next Sunday. Um, and I think we're gonna have a little uh, session after the speaking. We're gonna have a talk back. Um, from the quote sermon, end quote. Rather than an Easter um, creative craft. Okay, we'll save that for April. Um, also then moving into the slot after worship on the 19th 
is a forward chat with the search committee who wants to bring you an update about the results of the priority setting exercise that you have done. And on the 26th, we'll welcome Reverend Alex Shea Will, our area conference minister, who will join us and bring a good word. Uh, so those are the changes for March. If you're dizzy, oh well. <laughs> this week at church, we have Zoom to prayer on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Everyone is always welcome to join um, using that link. Uh, at 7 p.m. the same night, um, the legacy team is having a Zoom meeting. And on Wednesday, the search team is having a Zoom meeting at 7 p.m. Those are the announcements I have. You want to bring prayer concerns? Yes. So, um, prayer concerns. So Donna Kendall hopes to be coming home today. So that's good news for Donna. Uh, also, she's been in hospital all week. Yes. Also, for the key, Cynthia Falkowski, she's going to have a procedure this week. That's Leah's mom. Could we keep Cynthia in our prayers? Lisa? Yep. Um, I don't have a lot of others. I know we have lots of others on the prayer list, um, but we're gonna we're gonna invite you to mention the ones that you have on your list, folks, and concerns that you have on your lists uh, later in the service when we come to the prayer time. Um, so that's all I wanted to to name, except there's this one little other thing. You didn't give me permission, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, <clears throat> uh, Wednesday, I believe is Wendy's birthday. 67. Thank you. So we, uh, we, to you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Wendy. Happy birthday. Uh huh. We probably have a bundle of other unacknowledged birthdays. And to everybody who's having a birthday around this time, we wish you a happy birthday as well. I think that's everything. Um, so I invite you to turn to your bulletins where you will find our responsive call to worship. Let us join in calling one another to worship. What is it like? to begin again, like flowers in the spring that push through frozen ground. It is like babies learning to walk one clumsy step at a time. It is like Nicodemus in the night asking Jesus for guidance. It is like a Sunday morning starting our week anew. May we find God in our seeking. May we learn as we go. May we be brave enough to begin anew. Let us worship the God of new beginnings. I invite you to join in singing our opening hymn, which is Jesus Calls Us Here. You'll find it on the insert on page three. Um, and we'll sing verses one through three. Just one through three. Please rise as you are able and inclined.
Let us pray. God of love, God of new beginnings, we come with questions and with doubts about ourselves and others and even you. Grant us healing and openness to the ways that you speak to us. We want answers, we are seekers, and oftentimes we aren't listening. Grant us courage in our seeking, grant us peace in our living, grant us love in our hearts as we walk each day with you. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 12. Very early in the ancient Hebrew history, there was a couple known as Abram and Sarah, whom God later renamed to the more familiar Abraham and Sarah. They were renamed because of their accomplishment, of their history of stepping out in faithful response to God's calling. This is the very first example of God calling to them and of their faithful response. Good morning. God said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, and the home of your parents, and go to a place I will show you. I will make you, I will make of you a great people. I will bless you and make your name so great that it will be used in blessings. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you and all the people on the face of the earth will be blessed through you. Abraham, who was 75 years old when he left Haran, began the journey as God had instructed. As you know, or are beginning to gather, our Lenten series is about seeking and asking questions us into deeper faith. The series creators included a songwriter in the Gathered Artists, whose theme song has been in my head now for many weeks. It is called Land of the Seeking, and the lyrics are printed on the back page of your book. I think it's a pretty awesome song. And um, Claire, whenever you're ready and whenever this equipment is ready, we will listen to it and watch the video. The Land of the Seeking.
Our second reading today comes from the Gospel of John. It is a very familiar story that is not easy. As a matter of fact, I find it one of the more challenging Jesus stories in the whole of the New Testament. It's one of Jesus' most confusing teachings, in my opinion. It is also often used as a litmus test of faith for those whom I believe have dramatically misunderstood Jesus' message. You may have even heard me talk about this before because it is a story I do love to tell. When I was in late junior high and high school, there was a wave of evangelical Christianity going through our community, especially amongst the kids in junior and senior high. It was not uncommon to hear children or teenagers speak to one another in the hallways of the school or on the street or um, at the ice cream shop or wherever, saying, hey, have you been born again? Are you saved? I was never comfortable with those questions until I heard my sister's answer. This is my sister who's three years younger than I am. And she simply said, why yes, I have been saved by this guy named Jesus almost 2000 years ago. It was a magnificent answer, and so simple. So here's the passage that prompted the question and my sister's faithful answer. The reading is from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. A certain Pharisee named Nicodemus a member of the Hasidrin came to Jesus at night. Rabbi, he said, we know you're a teacher 
come from God, for no one can perform the signs and wonders you do unless by the power of God. Jesus gave Nicodemus this answer. The truth of the matter is, unless one is born from above, one cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, how can an adult be born a second time? I can't go back into my mother's womb to be born again. Jesus replied, the truth of the matter is, no one can enter God's kingdom without being born of water and the spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. So don't be surprised when I tell you that you must be born from above. The wind blows where it will. You hear the sound it makes, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. How can this be possible? Asked Nicodemus. Jesus replied, you're a teacher of Israel and you still don't understand these matters? The truth of the matter is, we're talking about what we know. We're testifying about what we've seen, yet we don't accept our testimony. If you don't believe when I tell you about earthly things, how will you believe when I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the chosen one. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so the chosen one must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in the chosen one might have eternal life. Yes, God so loved the world as to give the only begotten son that whoever believes may not die, but have eternal life. God sent the only begotten one into the world, not to condemn the world, but that through the only begotten, the world might be saved. Here ends our readings for this morning. May God add a blessing to our hearing and understanding of the word. Amen. I invite you to turn to page 492 in your hymnals and let us join in singing the spirit of the living God. I think we'll sing it twice. never remember that there are actually two verses in our hymnal. I'm so used to it just being one. Now I've broken the microphone again. Well, there is so much to talk about in this passage and so little time. For one, did you ever notice that Nicodemus comes to see Jesus in the dark of the night? Not in the light of day, Rather, he comes skulking about in the dark, 
so that he could not be seen. And hopefully nobody would know that he'd come to consult Jesus. At least that's the way I imagine it. After all, he was a Pharisee, a teacher in Israel and a member of the high council, the Sanhedrin. And if the others ever found out that he went to see Jesus, this radical revolutionary guy, he'd probably lose all credibility. At night, sneaking to Jesus may be it was less of a risk. But it was still a risk. And it must have taken a lot of nerve and a lot of courage. Consider that. Nicodemus risked his life, his reputation, what his life was like day to day to see Jesus, to hear what Jesus had to say. Because if he had been found out and lost his credibility and his position, he would have been forced to start his life all over again from a new beginning. Hmm. Many of the newer translations of the Bible passage from John that Nancy just read have chosen to rework the crucial phrase that once had Jesus telling Nicodemus that he must be born again. Many, many of the versions of the Bible done before the 1980s used that phrase, born again. That has always given me such a struggle. Sometime in the past 40 years or so, biblical scholars began to emphasize that the Greek word for again can also be translated as above. So that we hear now in Jesus' teachings, the words, you must be born from above. And it gives a different perspective. This can change the way we hear and understand Jesus' meaning in his lesson for Nicodemus. I'm not saying it makes it a lot clearer, born from above, huh? but it does encourages, encourage us to rethink the meaning of this phrase and make it different and new for and to ourselves. We learn from Nicodemus himself that picking up and considering things in a new way, beginning to learn anew and to rehear and rethink opinions and to change behaviors, none of those things are without insignificant risk. No, when none of those things are without significant risk, they require courage and faith. They involve loss. It feels as though one is leaving one place, a known place, and going off to some place and something unknown which is scary. Imagine Abram and Sarah. They did not know where God was calling them to go. They knew they had to give up most of their life to follow God, not knowing what they might gain. We're like that too. And Nicodemus was like that. He knew that that night, even if no one discovered his visit to Jesus, he was taking a risk that could mean a whole new beginning. And that's what happened to Nicodemus or for Nicodemus. Not because he was discovered, there is nothing in the biblical record that suggests that he was, but because he was changed just by his encounter with Jesus. 
he was challenged and he decided to learn a new way of understanding and living out his faith. And if we're not sure that this was true for Nicodemus, we need only look at the record later to discover that it was he, along with Joseph of Arimathea, who claimed Christ's body after the crucifixion to take it and lay it in a grave. He was changed. He came to a new understanding and a new way of living out his faith. And I think that's what Jesus seems to have in mind for everyone. He asks people then and now to step forward toward what may be, rather than clinging to something that is no longer working, no longer healthy, no longer spiritually sound. And, but, Jesus also promises that beginning again in such a way will connect us all to something that could be and promises to be salvific, saving, something that takes us on to new beginnings and new realities, new love, and life eternal wrapped in that love. Well, friends, this passage is most certainly meant for us, right? In this moment, Second Church, and so many churches like it, are being challenged to step out in faith, not knowing what will come next. We are being led to give up systems and patterns that we cannot, oop, that no longer work, and trust that God will create something new that we cannot imagine and may never see. We are like Moses, who never saw the promised land. We are like Abram and Sarah, who so, and so many other generations of God's people, who are promised blessings when they summon the courage to leave here, make endings in the hope and belief that there will be new beginnings. I believe this action takes us into a place where wonder and worry dwell. We've all been experiencing that together, the wonder and the worry. It is a land where questions and uncertainties are real, way real, but also accepted. This is the risky and brave step of seeking God's spirit and love in forms we may not know or have dreamed of, but which God promised in Jesus and continues to promise to us every day individually and as a church and as a people of God and a world. We are invited to take the risky and brave step of seeking God's spirit and love in forms we may not know, in ways we may not be able to imagine, but which God promises we will find as a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, each of you, for being God's seeking people, people of such faith, people of such courage, in Jesus' name and way. Amen. Friends, we come now to a time of sharing our joys and our concerns, our celebrations. Could you put your hands up a little bit and Lisa will come to you as we share our prayers. Yes, I'd like to uh, have a blessings for my children. Um, my daughter, uh, Marie, she fell over and hurt her back. 
Mm -hmm. Only ice. The soul life. She's on that medication. So. And she uses that back for work rather a lot. Mm -hmm. So we pray for her and all your children. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of children, we keep the list of granddaughters. Emma <laughs> and Grace and Nora. Nora. <laughs> I knew it was there. Um, who else? Jack. Jan is doing well. We give thanks for Jan's healing from her knee surgery. Who else? Y'all are quiet today. <laughs> wow. Lorelai, wow. thank you. Peg mm -hmm. is still on her um, on her cruise, so we have to remember Lorelai. Thank you. My sister Deb, my sister Debbie, who's uh, still getting symptoms from her uh, uh, GPA, which is very severe, more than severe arthritis. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sister Debbie. We continue to hold many others in prayer, especially those who live in places that are foreign and difficult for, to us. Uh, we think of the folks in Ukraine, as well as folks in Turkey and Syria, as well as folks all over this country who have been uh, put through trials and tribulations with the weather and other issues. So we continue to pray for all in our world who are in need. Thank Wendy? you. Thank you, Lisa. Let us pray. God of new beginnings, God of second chances, and third, and fourth, and fifth, and more chances. Grant us courage to begin again, trusting that you are a God of many chances, more than we can count, and maybe more than we deserve. God of love, hear the cries of those who yearn for love. Broken families, lonely ones, unwanted ones, forgotten ones. God of justice, hear the cries of those who are persecuted and oppressed, those who are broken, those who are treated unfairly, those who suffer unjustly. God of peace, hear the cries of those who are in war-torn lands, for those on streets, for those in malls, for those in churches and schools. Hear the cries of those who are anxious, frightened, alone, and addicted. God of healing, hear the cries of those who are ill, physically, spiritually, emotionally. All those who are hurting, confused, depressed, and weak. Hear the cries of those we have named today. God of mercy, hear the cries of the ones who yearn for mercy, forgiveness, compassion. Hear the cries of all who are in need of grace. May your peace, love, justice, healing, and mercy rain down upon us all on this day and in the days to come. Amen. Now we lift in silence those prayers deep within our hearts. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, praying, our Father, Mother, Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Please turn back to the hymn on page three of your bulletins and let's join in singing verse four. Friends, come, come whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, it doesn't matter. Ours is not a caravan of despair, so come, even if you have broken your vows a thousand times, come, yet again, come. Dear friends, this is the table of our teacher and friend, Jesus. He calls us to come no matter who we are, where we have been, or where we are going. He invites us to find a place here, no matter what we are seeking, promising that there will be room for each of us. Here we join in prayer, seeking God's blessing and God's encouragement for living and loving. Praying that the bread and the cup may fill us in new in familiar ways. And we remember that it was at a table like this that Jesus gathered with his friends and followers. They joined in giving thanks and celebrating blessings. In the midst of the meal, Jesus lifted the bread and the cup and named them as sacred even though they would be broken and spilled. He shared them with everyone gathered, saying, take and eat and remember me. Now we take and eat and remember in Jesus' name. As you receive the elements, please go ahead and peel back the, um, where's the instructions? I just lost them. Peel back the little end of the container, the cover on the little end of the container, and go ahead and partake of the bread. Then turn the container over and slowly, carefully, peel back the cover on the larger end and hold the cup so that we may all receive together once all have been served. Friends, this bread and this cup are God's gifts to each of us.
Dear friends, this is the cup of the covenant that promises new beginnings for all people and for you. Let us take and drink in Jesus' name. Now please turn again to your bulletin and let us join in the prayer of thanksgiving. God, we give thanks for all the gifts of love and nurture you share at your table. Through the bread and the cup, we are given courage to begin again as we seek to live in faith and love. Bless us now as we go forth, filled with your spirit, and in Jesus' name, amen. We invite you to find your uh, hymnals and to turn to page 355, that's 355, we'll sing, This is a Day of New Beginnings. one more time to find your bulletins and join in this week's Lenten Advent, Lenten Affirmation of Hope. We believe in a God who meets us in the shadows, who welcomes our questions, who invites us to begin again. We believe that Jesus showed us a new way, a deeper faith, a more compassionate existence. We believe that all of our beginnings should return us to this foundation. And no matter how many times we lose our way, God always welcomes us home. Amen. Dear friends, as you move forth on your journey, whether you are going home or someplace unknown, you go with God's blessings. Now, go into the world also with peace. Amen. Amen.